Welcome to T-Rex Bites. I am Kathleen Klein, and today we have with us Gabe Angieri from Arch Grants. Actually, Gabe, Angieri, correct? Did I say that right? It is Angieri, yep. I don't know that I've ever said it to you before, so I want to make sure. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so can you give us a brief breakdown of Arch Grants for anybody that's not familiar with the program? Sure. So Arch Grants uh, is a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we were founded in 2011, um, really the first of our kind in the country that uh, partners with uh, philanthropic donors and community supporters to fund early stage startups that want to grow in St. Louis. Um, it was really a departure from traditional economic development approaches, uh, which uh, our founders and our board, you know, support and want to see more of in the community. But this was really a, um, a unique approach to providing early stage businesses and their uh, founders with critical seed capital to get their businesses going instead of trying to recruit big companies from the coast or from other um, cities. We decided to grow our own right here in St. Louis. Excellent. And I've, um, I've known Arch Grants a little longer than I've known you even. So it's been a really cool thing to see grow. And um, they've been a long time, long time partner of T-Rex and we're kind of linked in that way, which is awesome. Very compatible missions. So talk a little about, so we're, we're going to get into kind of COVID territory because we can't not do that at sure. this point, but just under normal circumstances, how does the vetting process work, the application process typically? Great question. Um, so typically we would start uh, broadcasting uh, the opening of our global startup competition around January of each year. Um, by February, we are usually open either February 1 or mid-February. Uh, we give about two, two and a half months to app for applicants to get their applications in. After that, we take about a month uh, to narrow the field in terms of who's actually eligible, meet, who meets our criteria for funding. Um, we push out those applications to a pool of about 250 online evaluators, uh, all of whom, whom generously volunteer their time to take a look at five to 10 applications each. Um, after that point, we go back to the scoring. Uh, we come up with about 75 to 100 semifinalists. We ask those semifinalists to go through an additional round of vetting, uh, and that might be staff interviews, might be meetings with some of our key volunteers, um, some local angel investors who have expressed interest in helping us um, uh, narrow the field. And then we will invite uh, 50 to 60 finalists to St. Louis uh, for our finalist pitch day, uh, usually in, uh, around August, mid-August. Okay. And is there... Um... I guess, in at least your experience, is there like a common thread between those companies? Like, would you say there's something that kind of sticks out? Yeah, it's actually one of the coolest things about Arch Grants is that we see companies from all different um, industries at all different stages, really. Um, we have companies that apply that have already raised, you know, a million, two million dollars. We ask ourselves, like, what can Arch Grants funding really do for those companies? In a lot of cases, it's it's not much, and we, we try to make connections and provide value where we can. Um, but we're really looking for companies where $50,000 can make a big impact in their growth stage and also at their St. Louis fit. So we look at, you know, what complementary indus industries or partners in St. Louis make, you know, your application a strong one to grow in St. Louis. Um, and we try to do it as much as we can before we actually award companies um, in terms of setting up connections and really providing a loose game plan for how they can integrate into St. Louis and really thrive here. Because we raise our funds from the donor, uh, donors in the St. Louis community, um, over 90% of our funds come from the local St. Louis community. We take, you know, we, we put a big value on making sure those dollars go to accelerate growth as companies in our local community. Well, and I think also worth noting, it doesn't mean necessarily that, oh, you're, we don't believe in this concept or whatever. It's like, what, how is this 50 K is this 50 K going to really do something with this company? Are they going to, is it, is it going to be worth giving it to them? Are, are they way past that already or. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, because we are a nonprofit focused on economic development in St. Louis, uh, you know, just because we don't fund a company in a given year, doesn't mean that we don't want to see them thrive in St. Louis and we will expend, you know, marginal staff time and resources where it makes sense to make some connections for them if we can. Um, you know, our primary focus is economic development in the city and region of St. Louis. 
So any way we can do that, we, we will try to do it, um, which is really a, an interesting and exciting thing about our, our model. We, we have the ability to adapt and innovate within our own model on you know, kind of a constant basis. I always feel like I struggle sometimes when I'm explaining the, you know, equity free grant, but what kinds of companies, but well, the, a lot of kinds, a lot of companies. <laughs> um, so no, but that's just because you guys have such a tremendous impact and um, well, also such a copyable, amazing program. Like I've toured so many organizations from around the country who just want to see mm -hmm. our facility, but really, really they're like, how can we get a thing like arch grants into our yeah. into our community because this is just like such a no-brainer for economic development and just like inserting well, something great in yeah i think it is a no-brainer in a lot of ways and it's extremely attractive to cities um, around the country we get approached pretty regularly um, to meet with people from um, uh, cities and municipalities all, all around the country to talk about how they can set up something like arch grants uh, in their community and one of the things that really separates St. Louis, uh, I think, in Arch Grants, uh, certainly, is that the St. Louis community is extremely generous. Uh, there are a lot of people here that care deeply, passionately about seeing our community thrive. Um, we've seen many, you know, many decades of economic decline. Um, and when our founders got this thing going back in 2011, it was really this vision of seeing St. Louis, you know, become that city uh, that you know, our earliest residents and denizens uh, thought it might be um, and really bring it into the 21st century. So switching gears a little bit, can you speak to what's different now, just in the current state of things in the wake of this pandemic? How have things changed? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, everything has changed. No. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> No, it's hard to it's hard to think about an aspect of our lives of our of our daily work that hasn't been affected by the current pandemic. Um, you know, fortunately, because we work um, with very you know, uh, largely tech savvy people, um, we're able to do our jobs remotely um, with relative um, relatively little impact on our ability to to execute. But um, yeah, our focus has really uh, shifted to how do we make sure that the economic impact that our companies have generated in St. Louis doesn't start to take a decline because of the economic recession. We're not, we don't fool ourselves. I mean, I think pretty much every business, every industry is going to feel this, um, this crisis in one way or another, but to the extent that we can leverage um, our financial resources, our staff resources, uh, the connections that we're able to make in the community, to help the founders that have committed to growing their business this year. Um, we are absolutely committed to doing that. And um, actually there was a story in the Post-Dispatch talking about our relief fund that we were able to put together about a month ago. Uh, in about four weeks, we were able to uh, assemble a, a great group of volunteers to help us evaluate applications from, um, I think there's over two dozen, almost three dozen, uh, three dozen companies seeking relief funding uh, to, you know, either because they were negatively impacted by the pandemic or because they had they saw opportunities to scale within the current crisis. Um, so balancing those two factors, um, we were able to distribute about $140,000 to 16 companies um, in a matter of yeah, less than four weeks. So it was- Excellent. And wait, can I ask, were those, sorry, those companies, were they Arch Grants, previous Arch Grants recipients? Yes. Okay, yes. okay. So uh, yeah, all Arch Grants companies, um, all based in St. Louis or with significant operations in St. Louis. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, you know, to date as of, uh, as of 1231, 2019, our companies have generated about $393 million in revenue, uh, raised over $290 million in follow-on capital, created over 1,800, um, 1800 jobs in, in, in the St. Louis region. Um, so when we looked around as the world was falling apart, <laughs> um, we asked ourselves, you know, what can we do to make sure that that momentum doesn't, doesn't take a nosedive? You know, these are, uh, although some companies are able to weather this and don't need our help and more power to them, um, we, you know, we want to be able to provide support to the companies where it makes sense, where they can either keep staff on board for a few months, um, where this thing hopefully winds down and we get back to some state of normalcy. And I think also just, again, worth noting, if it wasn't already obvious to anybody who's listening, 
this isn't just a one and done grant program. It's not like, here you go, walk away, do whatever with it. This is like, you guys are in it with them. I mean, a lot of these recipients or these previous Arch Grants recipients, I'm sure, or sorry, past Arch Grants recipients yes. who had applied for that relief funding, like they might have received funding from you guys like a long time ago, but you guys are still engaged. You're still making sure that that initial yep. initial plug of the 50K is still being stretched and and doing yeah. its work. So we had companies apply um, where we were able to fund companies from the 2013 cohorts through 2018. So companies from uh, six of our eight cohorts um, received funding. Um, it is, uh, it, it speaks to our approach of being industry agnostic that they represented uh, clean energy, biotech, consumer products and goods, um, medical tech, uh, technology and uh, remote learning technology. And to have that kind of impact across many different industries is extremely important. That's awesome. And I think that that's actually the perfect segue because you guys are launching a geospatial. Um, I don't know what we call this. Do we say it's a fund? Is it um, yeah, a, new, a, a new branch maybe? Yeah, I, I would describe it as a commitment um, to, to funding early stage companies in the geospatial um, sector. Because you know, very much aligning with with our mission and what I what I said previously, we look around the St. Louis region for complementary interest industries, and obviously there's a massive amount of uh, investment going into geospatial with the NGA West project um, in North City, and uh, to the extent that we can bring in early stage companies to St. Louis um, that will align with the growth, development, and ancillary needs of that uh, of that investment by the federal government. Uh, we're absolutely going to do that, and we were uh, privileged and honored to work with some key funders that were also interested in doing that um, to provide a number of grants focused solely on geospatial. And it's not the first time we've done uh, focused grants. Um, we've done grants, uh, you know, Bayer has, has supported grants in the past focused on health and nutrition, um, and, uh, and there's some other partners, uh, Franciscan Sisters of Mary, who have also made investments in the uh, food sustainability um, area in the St. Louis area. So it's another factor. What really excites me about Arch Grants is that as donors express interest, um, as our as our corporate and community partners express interest in investing in certain areas, you know, where it aligns with our mission of uh, supporting high growth startups in St. Louis, we're able to designate um, funds and, and allocate resources to um, to help those companies thrive in St. Louis. Excellent. And so do you think, I mean, are there any new ones on the horizon that you guys know that you'll be, new areas that you'll be throwing some funding into down uh, the line that you haven't yet? Or Yeah, I mean, we uh, yeah, trying to count the number of industries that we have uh, funded would be a difficult task. Uh, you rattled off quite a few, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not looking for you to come up with anything new, but it, it just sounds like there's, no, there's not necessarily a limit to this. You guys aren't going to say, no, that's not our area. It's like, it's really a matter of what these funders are, have a personal interest in, and if it's going to help support the economic stability of St. Louis, you guys are sound open. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's key, is that where a, a partner's interest, a, um, whether it be a, a foundation, a corporation, a private donor, um, where their interest aligns with our mission, vision, and values for um, the work we do, uh, we are we open that that door to have a conversation about funding specific companies in specific areas. Um, we, as a, at our core, we want to make sure that we're always um, supporting many different sectors um, because we don't pretend to know what's going to pop next. We don't pretend to know what company is going to, um, you know, what industry is going to take precedence in the you know, next year, two years, five years. Um, but uh, yeah, to the extent that we can target resources to specific, specific areas that align with our mission, uh, absolutely, we're going to do that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, to your question about the future activity, I, I, I imagine there's going to be massive investment in uh, crisis management, in um, healthcare and, and med medical technologies in the coming uh, months and years. And, you know, we will continue to have conversations with our partners uh, to determine if, if we can target grants in those areas. Excellent. Um, so on that note, would you say you have any advice? I, we've kind of been pepper, peppering in advice all over the place in this, but anything like that you could just like 
leave us with that's helpful for people who want to apply for an arts grant? Maybe they're nervous to do so. I mean, everybody talks about how it's rigorous. It's hard. I mean, yeah, anything it, you want to part with. There are a lot of uh, hoops to jump through for a fifty thousand um, dollar, you know, granted non no pun intended non dilutive uh, fund. But um, you know, I, what I would say is that where a company can demonstrate um, a strong value proposition, um, not necessarily to the St. Louis community, but for their, for their product or good, their service, um, and, uh, and demonstrate that they see a way to grow that in St. Louis, you know, we would, we would love for them to apply. And uh, I think it's telling that many of the companies, uh, the exact numbers in front of me, but many of the companies that we have ended up funding are uh, re repeat applicants. So they've, you know, they've applied maybe one, uh, you know, two or three times. And uh, it's that, you know, we will continue to see those applications come in year over year. Um, again, where we can provide some connections for them um, to see them, you know, hit that critical stage where they would be eligible for our funding, uh, we will do that. And uh, yeah, that's what I'd say. Awesome. And what's and so the the window's been pushed back, right? Just given the cir current circumstances. So can you just go ahead and sure. give us the details on? Yeah. So um, typically we would have closed our application period this year on April fifteenth. Um, you know, taxes and arch grants applications are due. Um, but uh, given the current uh, the current situation, we felt those inappropriate to be. You know that this would be a. Um, uh, on people's minds as they as they adapt to you know pretty radical changes in circumstances, so we uh, we postponed the application deadline indefinitely. Um, we're still working on an exact date of when we will cut it off, but we will start accepting applications again May fifteenth, um, and we welcome anybody to apply that has a that has a high growth business uh, that can succeed in St. Louis and and thinks that there are trans material. Okay, so that's May 15th is when that is the the portal is being reopened and yes. people can apply on your website. Uh, what is that? Archgrants? Archgrants.org? Archgrants. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> archgrants.org. And people really need to know, you got to apply multiple times sometimes. Don't be discouraged. Yeah, and I, I'll just say like, you know, we, we make that process um, a rigorous one because we are we are asking our community to support these companies. And where it's not just a, you know, it's not just an investor seeking an ROI um, from a specific business. Uh, we are seeking a uh, aggregate ROI for the St. Louis region. So, um, you know, we engage uh, four to 500 uh, St. Louis volunteers, St. Louis based volunteers in our process uh, throughout the process. And uh, many of these people are also our funders. Um, so we, we take it very seriously that the companies that we ultimately fund um, stand up to, to scrutiny, to, um, you know, to, to hard questions and can, can prove that their business is a strong one and, and uh, deserving of this, this incredible generosity of our community. Excellent. Thanks. This is, this is wonderful. This is all really great information. I think it's going to be helpful for a lot of people. And I really appreciate that you guys have yeah, push that back, that push back that deadline. I'm sure that's going to be massively helpful to people who had to kind of get their house in order, so to speak. Um, I'm, I'm just fascinated by the ones who really stand out and just kind of like those commonalities between them. Can you point to like one or two that come to mind and just T-Rex at least, like we have a couple who I'm like, this company, like they really fulfilled our mission. You know, they, they got started with us, they grew to a point, and then they got established in downtown St. Louis and, you know, whatever. So the ones that, like, really fulfill that mission for you guys, at least. Yeah, a couple of great examples uh, right off the top of my head. It, uh, you know, Less Annoying CRM, um, funded back in 2014. Uh, Alex Hyman, Tyler K, Bracken King, all WashU students. Um, I think they were all from, I, I know... Well, I know Alex is from Michigan, and I think um, Bracken and Tyler are both from the, the, the West Coast. Um, but they, you know, leveraging our arch grants and this $50,000 non dilutive award, um, they were able to get less annoying CRM off the ground. I can't remember exactly how many square feet, but it's uh, you know, well over 50,000 square feet of a commercial uh, office space they lease downtown now, right over on Olive Street. Uh, I think they're right around 25, 30 employees. Um, awesome providing critical value to small businesses looking for a less annoying CRM, just like the name implies. 
Um, so that phenomenal kind of uh, company, um, great, great leaders um, who participate with our program still, come back as judges, um, offer themselves as resources to new founders. Um, another great example would be Label Insight, incredible team, incredible company. Uh, they now have, uh, I think it's 100 employees in downtown St. Louis, uh, right up the street on Wash Ave. Um, you know, again, they participate as judges. They um, actually, one of their um, one of their founders and former CEO is now a strategic advisor for Arch Grants and is meeting with our new founders and helping them learn the ropes of, you know, what to look for in an investment opportunity, what uh, what to avoid, um, how, does, how to get that key hire in the door in a in, in a way that makes sense for the company at that moment. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of free advice out there um, to how to get a company um, going, and we we try to do our best to really uh, evaluate, vet the resources that we put in front of our founders so they they can accelerate growth. But yeah, those are a few examples, and I'd be happy to. Yeah, no, I that's perfect. I mean, I think it's just, and I have to admit, I drop less annoying CRM and so much in conversation just because they line up with when I had first started working for T-Rex. That's when they came in. And, and I think the real, the thing that really sticks out between those that you just mentioned, and I think this is a, a really important point for people to consider if they're applying for an arch grant and they're coming from out of town, it's like, you guys really appreciate when a company not only is has something to offer the St. Louis community has a great company wants to grow it here is adding to our economic vitality but also just that that piece of like truly wanting to do good for St. Louis like having that passion for for our region is appreciated because sure. yeah if you're just coming to collect your 50k and run it's like what was this for you know so Precisely. And, 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 you know, that's where a lot of our volunteers play a big part in the vetting process and really getting to the, getting to the motivations, the character of the entrepreneurs that we fund, um, you know, and, and uh, Alec, actually Alex Hyman of, of Lesson 9 CRM often says, um, you know, if you move here for $50,000, you're a fool, um, which is something that uh, resonated with me um, as a non-native St. Louis and, um, you know, who's been here about 20 years, you know, it, it, he's a quotable guy. I just adore oh, okay. him. Yeah. <laughs> and I, um, I, I think worth noting as well, at least from our side of things, it's like these guys, they, they came in, they rented office 736. I don't know why that is <laughs> locked in my brain. Um, they managed to squeeze like six people into that office. Mm -hmm. They grew to a second office. Once they were outgrowing that one, I think they might've taken on another one kind of for like a conference room purpose. And then it was like, okay, we could in mass more space here. This isn't the point. We wanna, we wanna make sure that you guys are sustainable as an organization and that we're moving on at the appropriate time so that you can flip our offices. They were also participating in Arch Grants at that point, also giving back to companies within our space. It was just like, I, I don't know how else to, to describe that help. And I mean, just having that dedication to the mission and just being such great stewards for, for downtown and representing Arch Grant so well, it's just, they're like, they're worth their weight in gold. I appreciate them so well, much. And I think that they're like just one that I always like to talk about because I know them personally, yeah. but you know, anyway, it's right. just a big love fest for less annoying CRM <laughs> over here. <laughs> um, so um, but yeah, I think if there's a common thread with the entrepreneurs that we fund, it's that, you know, even though they may not have the capacity to get involved with the local community um, right away, uh, they are by nature people that can't help but get involved at some point when it makes sense for them. Um, so a lot of the, you know, a lot of the founders that, that come through our program in the early days are, you know, they're working 18 hours a day. They are focused solely on achieving um, their goals relative to their business interests. Um, and then as they mature and, and grow um, or wind down their first company um, and, and start that second company, which we have a number of examples of in St. Louis, at some point they will get involved. They will start giving back to the community. And we're starting to see that now in a big way. And it's, it's, it's really gratifying. We focus on that founder, uh, not necessarily the business. You know, if the business sells, you know, uh, exits in, in six months or a year or whatever, um, that's great. We still want that founder in St. Louis um, it's really a, a talent recruitment uh, strategy almost to get 
uh, high quality uh, driven people to St. Louis. Um, once they're here, uh, obviously the, there's, we take very seriously the job of, of proving out why St. Louis is a good place to grow business. Um, but by and large, they do realize that at some point and, um, and you know, sink their roots and, and grow their company here. Or, you know, in some cases where it doesn't make sense, they may move their business elsewhere. Um, we, because we don't take equity positions in the companies, um, you know, obviously we're very focused on the St. Louis economic um, vibrancy, but we will continue to maintain relationships with those entrepreneurs, you know, in perpetuity, as long as they want to have um, conversations with us. Um, while we can't provide maybe as many resources or uh, staff time or, or energy to help drive their business if they move to, you know, Ontario or, or Kansas or whatever. Um, we, we think it's important that they can be ambassadors for St. Louis, for Arch Grants, wherever they end up. Excellent. Um, this, is, this is wonderful. Um, do you have anything you want to show off today? Anything weird? Have you taken up knitting? Has anything changed in your life since you've been... Where's that dog? I don't know. Any anything you want to throw in that is uh, not a regular office thing. I would grab my dog. Forgive me about it. <laughs> Do it. We gotta. Oh yay! Oh. There's Daisy. Oh Daisy, good girl. Come Daisy, that. look it walk. <laughs> friend. Nobody cares. No one sees screens. Yeah. This is just for me. Sorry, Gabe. My, my other dog uh, does see screens, and she she'd probably be trying to attack Walter through the. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. No, no, Daisy is very cute. Thank you for for entertaining this for me because oh look at oh oh see that's really nice. That's gonna be really that's gonna be really really great for this video. <laughs> Not none none of this is getting getting cut. So <laughs> okay, well um. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to talk and sure. rep for Arch Grants and also make make us look awesome in the process. So we really appreciate that too. Well, you guys are awesome. Uh, thanks for all you do, Kathleen and BJ and yeah. Patty and the whole team. And uh, T-Rex is a critical part of the community and, and we're you know always grateful for the help and support you guys give. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, we're signing off. Thank you. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of T-Rex Bites, where you can get little bites about what's happening in the T-Rex world. T-Rex is a nonprofit technology, innovation, and entrepreneur development center dedicated to strengthening the economic vitality of St. Louis. You can find future episodes at Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, or by checking us out at anchor.fm slash T-Rex Bytes. And you can learn more about the T-Rex Innovation Center by visiting us at downtowntrex.org. This episode was written, produced, and edited by T-Rex staff. Music provided by Shane Ivers at silvermansound.com. Cover art by Jocelyn Edwards. On behalf of the T-Rex team, I'm communications manager BJ Krayberg. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll catch you next episode.